So, welcome to another episode of uh, This Week in R, presented by the Hong Kong R User Group, and I'm Cheng So. And uh, today is already Friday. It's the end of the March. Uh, actually, we I should record it in a Monday, but you know, I can't. So, uh, but still, I, I I want to record uh, 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 an episode uh, this week because there is a lot of interesting development uh, in R uh, this week. So. Uh, without further ado, okay, this is our uh, this is okay. This is our Facebook, uh, the Hong Kong R user group. Add us, uh, okay. Again, without further ado, I will go through uh, all the important development in R uh, last week. Okay, uh, the first one is from Microsoft. Okay, the Azure and um, is the uh, cloud service. Okay. And um, <clears throat> last week, they released uh, the parallel backend of uh, Azure, and uh, you can now running some job in your local machine, and then submit those job onto your Azure uh, instance on the cloud, and run it as uh, in in parallel. Using this uh, package called uh, to Azure uh, Parallel. Okay, actually, if you have used it, use uh, some parallel uh, uh, backend uh, for R before. For example, like uh, do MC. Actually, the, the 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 API or the the usage is actually the same. Uh, with the only difference, uh, you need to uh, specify. Uh, your Azure instance uh, online uh, by setting up the the, the 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 configuration information and then make a cluster and then register it. Okay, if you're using uh, do MC do MC before, you also need to uh, register your your multi core uh, machine and then create a worker. Okay, actually it's the same, and then uh, using the for each and then uh, do par. Actually, you can do the parallel online on the cloud using Azure, but of course you need to pay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's still an interesting, uh, interesting uh, development uh, if you use Azure. Uh, so the next thing is also about Microsoft. Okay, they uh, release the official one point zero of the R tools. For the Visual Studio two hundred one five. Okay, if you use Visual Studio, we if you use uh, Visual Studio a lot, you may find it interesting because now you can use the Visual Studio to edit your R code. So, uh, <clears throat> and it's now official. Previously, they have the beta. Now it's official one point zero. So, uh, if you like to use uh, Visual Studio. Definitely check it out. And uh, what is the killer feature of that? Okay, because uh, you can edit a lot of different programming language code in Visual Studio. So now they sell themselves as a Polyglot IDE. So therefore, you can uh, <coughs> edit any kind of code: R, Python, C++, C++, Node, JS. SQL, whatever. So, uh, so if you're using Visual Studio, check it out. Okay, the next thing is the interesting development. Really interesting. Uh, okay, a lot of weeks, few weeks, few weeks ago, I have demonstrated the uh, reticulate, and um, which is uh, you can use the uh, Python uh, in R. And uh, last week, uh, we calculate uh, is already officially on CRAN. So <clears throat> after that, there are interesting development. The first one is TensorFlow. Okay, TensorFlow is an open source software library for numerical computation using data flow graph. And 
okay, this description is meaningless. Okay, uh, I, 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 I can summarize it uh, in one sentence. It is a deep learning uh, library from Google, okay, and everyone using it. And um, so uh, now you can do deep learning using TensorFlow uh, under R, but actually it's under Python, but we will uh, do the heavy lifting part uh, in Python and then return everything uh, from Python to R using Reticulate. And uh, now we can, we can do it. So now we can do deep learning. So, uh, and uh, actually I have tried it. I've tried it. And uh, again, using the MNIST dataset, okay? Uh, if you don't know what is the MNIST dataset, I do a deep learning demo three weeks ago using H2O on the MNIST dataset, which is the handwritten digit dataset. And uh, you can also do the deep, actually in the H2O case, which is just a, a forward feeding, uh, forward feeding, multi-layer perception, okay? And uh, it's, it's, it's deep learning, but it's at least is a neural network, artificial neural network. But uh, if you want to do some advanced stuff, uh, like uh, CNN or RNN or LSTN, you need to use, okay, currently, you, your, 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 your best bet is TensorFlow. And I've tried it. Actually, it's okay. As you can see, the code of the TensorFlow code is not very R like. It's very Python, Pythonry, <laughs> if there is a word called Pythonry. And um, actually, I don't like it. Uh, and I've tried it, and uh, yeah, sorry, I don't like it because it's too complicated for doing a very simple job of uh, learning the, uh, the uh, handwritten digit, okay? And as you can see, I need to use 98 uh, lines of code. I just copy it from the, from the demo. It's already 98 lines. Of course, you can do a lot of customization and, uh, and uh, all kind of stuff. But <clears throat> I would say that if you are new, if you are new to deep learning, you will be scared away by this, okay? Because it's insane, it's not easy to use. Uh, if you are a researcher in deep learning, you may find it useful, but if you are just a user, you want to use, you want to train a deep learning model for your data, you may not want to use TensorFlow, okay? And um, because of the reticulate, we have something else. So uh, there's another uh, deep learning library which is called Kira. Kira is originally for Python. Again, because of the availability of Reticulate, okay, now we can use Kira uh, in R. And uh, Taylor Arnold uh, created a new package called uh, Kira's R, which is the R interface to the Kira deep learning library. And um, I would say that, okay, if you really want to do it, do deep learning under R, use this one, okay, because it's easy to use. And um, again, uh, I, I'm trying an endless uh, example, and um, it's really easy to use. It's something that you, you expect a, 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 a machine learning library should behave like this. And uh, you can uh, create uh, the, the training set and the test set, and then using uh, 
a function called sequential, you can create a network structure, which is, I would say, is is making much more sense to create it this way. Is even though you may not know how each uh, layers, uh, the meaning of each layers of, for example, C O N V two D. What is the C C O N V two D? At least you can you can you can you can you can Google for it, but if you're using the TensorFlow, it's not that easy to do it. So the keywords abstract the, uh, the, the 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 crazy part of TensorFlow so that you can just say C O N V two D to represent a, a convolution uh, layers uh, and then uh, some parameters. So you can add a, a, a convoluted layers, and then uh, what is the output of that layer? And then add another layer, add another convoluted uh, layer, and then add another output. And then uh, maybe you you need to use drop out to prevent overfit, and then uh, create an output layer. That's it. So. After you uh, create uh, the, the, the network structure, uh, in this case it's called mode, uh, you can uh, compile that uh, network and then you can just fit your data okay, using the training set and, and the, using the training set and then the uh, batch size, meaning every time how many data is fit into the, the network to do the training. And then uh, how many epoch, meaning uh, how many run through of the data, and then uh, maybe you because because I, I use the uh, dropout, so I I need to add a, a, a cross validation speed, so I speed the data into line ninety percent and then ten percent, and use that ten percent to do the uh, uh, to do the dropout, so that it uh, randomly switch off some notes or some neuron and um, so after I fit it okay basically I, I just use uh, the, the, the keywords is just using the tensorflow so they just uh, abstraction layer of tensorflow so to in order to make tensorflow easy to use and um, and I, 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 I train that and um, so this is a lesson number one about doing deep learning uh, in, in, in your own machine. So if you really want to do deep learning, buy a computer with a good uh, GPU. And preferably, preferably, your GPU should be from uh, NVIDIA. And uh, if you have a GPU in your machine, or if you have multiple GPU in your machine, you can the uh, Keras or TensorFlow can take advantage of, of your CPU and then uh, make the training extremely fast. But if you're like me, I just have a MacBook Air. A MacBook Air didn't have a good GPU, it just have a built-in Intel GPU. So TensorFlow or Keras cannot take advantage of that. So it will just use the CPU for doing the training. So if you use the CPU for training in the MS data set, it will take about, okay, in this case, because I, I used to drop out, it takes about half an hour. So, but if you have a GPU, it can be done in a few minutes, okay? So lesson number one, if you're really interested in deep learning, use a computer with GPU, okay, with a good GPU. And um, so, because of the time, so I already trained uh, 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 a uh, deep learning model already. So it's, now I can just uh, do the validation, so which is uh, I will try to create uh, uh, a confusion matrix like this. So uh, I will just copy the code here, 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 yes. And then 
hate it. Ah, oh, I hate that. So there's one problem with e e Emacs and ESS is when you copy and paste some codes, uh, it, every contain underscore it will become something like that, which is something that I don't like. Uh, it can be changed, like uh, for example, temporary uh, switch off uh, the uh, the conversion of uh, underscore to uh, to arrows. But because I'm lazy, so <laughs> I didn't do it. And uh, so that one is do the prediction, and then uh, I, I will get the uh, Y test hat, which is the predicted values of the test set, and then uh, do a confusion matrix. As you can see, most of the values is aligned in the uh, diagonal, and uh, the error is. Okay, other values are the wrong prediction, not not on the uh, not on the diagonal are uh, the wrong prediction. So, as you can see, the error rate is not so high, and um, so how low is low, right? She should be over ninety. Okay, ninety. 98%. Okay, this is a typical deep learning uh, accuracy you can get from the MNIST dataset. Okay, the stage of the art. If you if you have uh, if you know how to do the uh, how to how to configure it, the network uh, to look like a, the stage of the art uh, uh, deep learning model, uh, the test set accuracy. Can be over ninety nine percent, but this time I just use the default, so you get ninety eight, which is very high already. If you're using other machine learning algorithm, like uh, the last time I used the um, last time it said is a deep learning, but uh, last time is uh, is uh, what is uh, oh I always forget the name multi layer. Okay, forward fitting multi layer perception. Okay, the accuracy is around ninety six percent. And uh, if you use uh, other simple um, ma machine learning algorithm like uh, like what like random forest, I guess is the the accuracy is around ninety five the most, the the highest. So if you Use deep learning for uh, image data like this can get a very good accuracy. So now, because of the reticulate, we can take advantage of TensorFlow and also Keras, so that we can do uh, deep learning in R now. So once again, I am a chainsaw, and uh, I think this this week is already very long. And I, sorry, I don't have time to prepare the, uh, the this week in R tips. Uh, I hope that uh, the introduction of uh, the deep learning libraries is interesting enough. Actually, if you want to play with it, just just do it because it's exciting. And uh, so uh, we are the Hong Kong R user group and. Uh, See you next week. Bye-bye.